Hi everyone, I'm Katya and unusually for me, I'm doing a tag video and not just one tag, but two tags. First up, I was tagged by Margaret Pennard to do the I am the reader book tag, which is a tag created by Penguin Random House to promote the book The Reader by Tracy Chi, I think about six years ago. And if I remember correctly, this tag was sort of resurrected by uh, Jim's books reading and stuff. So number one, choose one word that describes being a reader. I've gone with free, free to travel to places in our world and beyond, um, free to set aside limitations, whether physical or environmental, and free to understand different perspectives that a conversation or an observation, for example, might not be enough to have you fully appreciate. But then when you've got it in the written word and you can go over it again in your mind, it's a lot clearer, so free. <laughs> Number two, what's the very first book you fell in love with? And the very first book is actually not exactly a book. It was a fairy tale compilation on a cassette. Uh, my parents used to pop the tape, this cassette tape <laughs> in to a player. I'm, I'm just suddenly aware that, you know, generationally there's some people who've never had a cassette player. But anyway, they used to pop this cassette in for me and play um, it tell me of us and it was I think version or series number seven and it had six stories on there including uh, Die Schneekönigin which was my favorite. It also had things like um, Spuk in dem Spukhaus. As you can tell it was all in German. Now Die Schneekönigin, um, the Snow Queen, is an original fairy tale from Danish author Hans Christian Andersen who also wrote the Little Mermaid and I really just remember the narrator giving <laughs> such a feeling to the story and that's what got me hooked. Number three, hardcover, paperback, ebook or audiobook. If it's a book that I want to keep I'll go into a sort of like curation mode and want to own a hardcover version to grace my bookshelves and I sometimes resent having an inbuilt curation mode for books because even now with the cost of living crisis it's like I can hear pretty editions calling to me saying buy me <laughs> but at least I also have a practical mode and I'd be in debt without the practical mode so um, yeah I would say digital versions uh, I like uh, for travel and they're nice and light so it doesn't really matter to me whether it's an ebook or an audiobook although if I'm driving obviously audiobook I get paperbacks when there are no digital versions or if I'm buying from an independent uh, publisher or bookshop I also tend to get a lot of paperbacks from the local library as that's the most common format of book that they have and in the charity shops as well. Um, most books that are donated tend to be the paperbacks too. Number four, how has reading shaped your identity? Um, I think it has given me an appreciation not just of imagination, but also an appreciation of the ability for people to see a single event in several different ways. So I guess as an identity, it's made me more contemplative than I might have been otherwise, but I'm not sure. I mean, it's like chicken and egg. Am I an INFJ because I'm a reader or am I a reader because I'm an INFJ? And do you even believe in anything to do with personality types from MBTI? <laughs> and then we go on to, otherwise this is gonna be a tangent that I'd happily go, go down, but let's go on to the next prompt. What book do you need to read when you need to be comforted? I go with a middle grade book called Kiki's Delivery Service, which reminds us to take a step back from um, always helping other people and do a little self-care for us so that we are able to help others again. So it's about self-care. Um, and it's a middle grade fantasy novel that was turned into one of my favorite animations of all time by Studio Ghibli. Number six, who taught you to be a reader or did you do it all on your own? Now, I'd like to say that it's all on my own because in my family, um, my cousins, my siblings, not really that into reading. Um, but <laughs> I think that 
certain things have actually contributed to it as well. And I would say that my mother got me interested in reading in English. Obviously, the audiobooks that I talked about or the cassettes in German got me interested. But the switch into actually reading for myself and in English happened when sort of overnight due to the quirks in my life, um, I went from having German as a first language to suddenly having English as a first language. And I had been used to speaking to my mother in German and she'd respond to me in English and I'd understand. Um, and so it was really strange to me as a six-year-old being in a class uh, that only spoke English and they'd be speaking to me in English and I'd respond in German and they'd be going, oh, shame, she doesn't understand. And the whole time I was thinking, no, no, you don't understand because I've actually given you a response here. Anyway, my teacher at the time had suggested that I stay back a year because I joined um, sort of midway in the year um, with all the other six-year-olds and she suge suggested stay back and my mom decided actually you know what let's do this intensive at home reading so I had loads of like Jack and Jill went up the hill and I had to read these books in English but then they got more and more interesting uh, these books in English and I was then riveted. <laughs> Number seven, describe your dream reading lounge. Um, I guess comfy chairs, uh, bookshelves filled with my favorite sorts of stories and a place to rest my teacup and cuddle up with my dog, Milo. Number eight, what book changed the way you act or see the world? I don't think it's gonna be one individual book, but I think what stands out for me is I don't read a lot of self-help books, but uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey was one of the first that I did read. And it really um, got me thinking and encouraging me to be more intentional about certain things in my life. Um, I was also, this is the end of this tag, but I was also tagged by Becky over at Teacup, the storyteller, to do the reading pet peeves tag so we're into a new tag and question number one is do you use or read along with audiobooks and the answer is yes I have an annual uh, membership of 24 audiobooks this is something that I did because I was traveling three or four hours a day uh, for work and I just you know um, get the auxiliary cable stick it into my phone now it doesn't even work because my phone doesn't have an auxiliary cable uh, but I do travel less in the car anyway um, what I haven't done is cancel the subscription that I had set up um, as part of my commute because I absolutely love audiobooks so I've kept the subscription um, I do listen to audiobooks but if I have an audiobook I don't go and pick up the physical or ebook version Unless it's something I love so much that I want to have a physical hard cover um, when I go into curation mode and I want to keep that on my shelves. But otherwise, generally, um, most of the audiobooks that I have, I've just got the audiobook. I don't have it in a different format as well. Um, number two, do you utilize your lo local library? And I do, but not nearly often enough. Uh, do you DNF books? Yes. But this year, I've been really lucky. I don't think I've DNF'd anything yet. Um, but there was some feedback about my TBR for September. Um, and potentially, I'm going to be uh, DNFing one of those books because it seems to be a book that a lot of people have DNF'd. Number four, do you read multiple books at the same time? Guilty. Yes, I do. I read three at the same time, unless I've got a very, very chunky read um, of like 800 pages, in which case I tend to have to concentrate on that one. It is like reading multiple books at the same time. Number five, do you make time or have a specific time in your day devoted to reading? No, I just grab any free time that I find. Uh, the other day I had to travel uh, for six hours, so three hours up to Sheffield and three hours back. Um, I went to visit a relative who was really poorly in hospital. And in that time, I read a book that I hadn't even popped onto one of my TBRs, um, but it was newly released. And it is um, How to Live Your Life When You Could Be Dead by Deborah James. And I read that, um, yeah, in, in the... in that one day. It was really compelling, um, extremely sad, but also hopeful. Uh, number six, do you 
dog era books and um, yeah only academic books though uh, so I haven't done it in ages I did it when I was doing my degree I would dog ear highlight scribble all over um, but I don't do that for books that I read just for pleasure Number seven, do you annotate your books? And the answer is yes to that, uh, but only if I'm really getting a particular feel for the book where I feel like, oh, there's a lot more than meets the eye because I don't see the point of annotating otherwise. If I find it fairly easy to follow along with, uh, then I don't tend to. But it's when you've got certain themes and patterns where you think, ooh, uh, I think this is something less obvious then I tend to annotate. Number eight, how do you feel about spoilers? I feel that spoilers are discussed as a topic on booktube a lot, a lot, a lot. And it used to get me worried uh, when I started out on booktube because it'd be like, oh, am I giving away too much about a book? Is this too little about a book? And you know what? You just have to go with the flow and uh, go with what feels right to you. Um, with classics, you know, give me as much detail as you like. But with contemporary books, I feel don't tell me everything. I don't want to know that, um, right, the blurb says this is going to happen, but actually what happens to Jane is this, and then um, she does X, Y, and Z, and giving me the whole detail of, you know, the plot. Um, I don't mind, though, having general theme, setting, and tone of the book. That, to me, is not a spoiler. Um, telling me whether it's harrowing or light-hearted and that there's particular triggers is not a spoiler to me. Uh, but everyone has got a different baseline. Everyone's got a different definition of what is a spoiler. So, yeah, that's mine. And those are the tags. If you fancy doing either one of these tags, please consider yourself tagged by me. I hope you're all having a fantastic September. Mine's been really full on and it's been sort of like up and down, up and down, like loads of different stuff going on. Uh, I won't bore you with the downs, but anyway, I've been traveling up and down the country to visit family and do stuff. And before we had the sad news about the Queen passing away here in the UK, there was fun stuff like picking up my sister from the airport when she flew in from the Netherlands to surprise my mom for her birthday. Surprise! What? Um, we're just midway or almost midway through September. I'm making great progress with my sci-fi reads, really chunky ones. But oddly, I am making very poor progress on my shorty September list of books that I shared in my TBR. So these little tiny little things, you know, these... <laughs> You know, nothing, nothing there, insubstantial little books. I'm halfway through this one of the like 11 that I said I was going to read. So that to me feels really odd, but you know, perhaps I should have started with these. That might have been the sensible thing to do, but instead I've gone for the really long ones and, um, but I'm enjoying it. So, you know, who am I to question uh, my logic on the way I started out my TBR? But wish me luck on continuing with that one. I did find the first story a little bit slow going. Uh, but yeah, I, I am determined to get into the box set and read these. I just wish they were as compelling right now as the space opera books that I'm reading. <laughs> so I might just be in a space opera zone at the moment. Let me know how you're getting on with your reading this September. Um, are you in a reading slump? Are you in the zone for a particular genre? Um, yeah, let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, take care and bye.